Tonight on Connecticut's news station, a pause is not enough, say supporters of Palestinians in Gaza. Today, they rallied here and around the world. We're live with the latest on the war. These poor pups were left out in the cold, tied up and abandoned. Now that they've been rescued, what happens to them now? And this really happens. The Pope fired an American bishop, one of his loudest critics, who refused to step down unless Pope Francis himself said so. And today, he said so. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thanks for joining us on the Fox 61 News at 10 on the CW. I'm Carmen Chow. We begin tonight with developing news in the war between Israel and Hamas, both there and here at home. Now to Gaza, where airstrikes once again lit up the skies. Israel's prime minister is refusing to heed calls for a ceasefire from the U.S. and all over the world. Benjamin Netanyahu repeated his stance on Israeli TV, no ceasefire until all 239 hostages are freed by Hamas. Israeli ground troops have intensified their engagements with Hamas fighters in Gaza City, fighting in the streets near hospitals, which Israel accuses Hamas of using using as human shields. So far, Israel soldiers have found 90 tunnels used by Hamas, but have not located any of those taken hostage by Hamas. Today, Israel halted its bombardment of Gaza for another so-called tactical pause, six hours to allow more humanitarian aid in and to allow civilians to get out. A spokesperson for Israel's prime minister was asked why he has rejected those calls for a longer ceasefire. People have to understand it. Um, it is a matter of, of life and death to Israelis. We will not accept any kind of talk. It, talking about a ceasefire, we don't have this privilege. Meanwhile, in Saudi Arabia today, Arab leaders met to discuss the war and what to do. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman says the war needs to end and that all of the hostages need to be returned. And tonight, the aid that is reaching Gaza is still just trickling in and is desperately needed. Palestine's health minister is calling for immediate help for one hospital that has lost electricity. Patients are suffering from lack of oxygen and medicine. Civilians who are hunkered down in the war zone say even if they survive the airstrikes, they and their children may still die of disease. Our children it, suffer it, it, from all it, the diseases it, it, that you can it, imagine, diarrhea, head, vomiting, fever, it, there is no medicine, there is no food, and there are no blankets either. And new at 10, those calls for action are growing louder here at home. Hundreds gathered in Waterbury today demanding justice for Palestinians. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live outside the scene of today's demonstration in Waterbury City Hall. Jake. Well, Carmen, for two and a half hours, people packed the square here at City Hall in Waterbury, demanding for a ceasefire and for action from congressional leaders for helping Palestinians in Gaza. Free, free, free Voices echoed through the streets of downtown Waterbury. Several local groups, including representatives from the city's Human Rights Commission, hosted the rally, hoping to send a message. I continue to say that I love my people, I want freedom for them, and I continue to tell these lawmakers we do not want to repeat history. Calls for a ceasefire rang out with activists calling for the U.S. to intervene to stop Israel's attacks on Gaza, which have killed innocent people there. We are calling for a ceasefire. We're not calling for war. I want to repeat that. We are calling for a ceasefire. A new report by the U.N. states that out of the 11,000 people killed in Gaza since the Israel-Hamas conflict escalated last month, more than 4,000 of those were children. We want nothing but peace and humanity. We want to save babies' lives. We don't want nothing to happen to the Palestinian people. Saeed says that here in Connecticut, both Jews and Muslims have agreed that there needs to be peace. We had some nice collaboration with the Jewish community. We're in good talks, and they understand. No one wants to see their family get killed, but 11,000 people is too much. During Saturday's rally, Senator Chris Murphy joined 25 other senators asking Congress to approve President Biden's request for $10 billion in humanitarian aid. Senator Chris Murphy writes, protecting civilians and ensuring access to basic needs is critical for strategic success. 
Going on to say it also requires giving Palestinians hope for a better future, starting with making sure that humanitarian aid continuously reaches vulnerable civilians in Gaza. Saeed says that humanitarian aid alone is not enough. He needs to call for a ceasefire. You can't bombard people with bombs, kill them, kill their family members or injure them and then say, let me give you some kind of help. Stop this. This is ridiculous. The event ended with a call to prayer. We're calling for peace. We're not calling for war. And in recent days, Senator Chris Murphy has said he does not support the idea of a ceasefire, but he says that the civilian casualties in Gaza is far too high. Live in Waterbury, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Jake, thank you. Pro-Palestinian protesters also demonstrated today in New York City, forcing the closure of Grand Central Terminal. And today in Wilmington, Delaware, hundreds of people marched through the streets near President Biden's home. They waved the flag of Palestine and chanted, Free Palestine Now. The protesters called for an end to the hostilities and labeled the president a war criminal for supporting Israel. And an estimated 300,000 demonstrators turned out in London today to show their support for Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Right-wing counter-protesters clashed with police. At least 82 of the counter-demonstrators were taken into custody. The latest grim numbers from the region, more than 1,400 Israelis killed by Hamas on October 7th. Since then, more than 11,000 Palestinians have died, according to their health ministry. And Hamas is still holding an estimated 200 and 39 hostages, including about 10 Americans. Also new tonight, a Bloomfield High School football player is recovering at home after being released from the hospital for taking a serious hit to the shoulder during last night's home game. Tallentown manager Brian Foley posted on Facebook saying there was a football game between Tallent High and Bloomfield High. It resulted in the Bloomfield High player being injured very badly to the point where the game was stopped and postponed. That player was transported by ambulance. We're just glad to hear he's okay. Turning out to the weather watch, this is our second consecutive dry fall weekend in a row. Hopefully that continues for a while. Take a look at how it looked outside of our station earlier today. A quiet but sunny Veterans Day weather wise, but those temperatures are expected to drop for the next two nights. Let's check in with meteorologist Sam Sampiri with a first look at our forecast. Hi, Sam. Hi there, Carmen. Yes, imagine that. So, uh, two consecutive weekends of dry conditions. A nice day today. A little front come in and actually temperatures uh, did OK. 50 to 55, pretty much what you can expect for this time of year. But we have cooled off. We did have a secondary front come in. So we're now down to 31 in Windsor Locks, 32 Waterbury, 33 Norwich, the 41 in New Haven and Bridgeport. A good 10 degrees colder. Uh, than it was 24 hours ago in some spots. So therefore, yes, we are cooling things down that northerly uh, flow. We have mainly clear skies uh, overhead. And those clear skies extend through most of New England. We have high pressure actually in the Great Lakes, controlling our air mass for the next 24 to 48 hours. Look at this, mainly clear, wind diminishing, cold. Look at these temperatures by tomorrow morning. You wake up temperatures down between 25 to 30 with some colder uh, towns. And then during the day tomorrow, temperatures getting up into the lower and the middle 40s. Ignore these showers. This is some old writing. Uh, not bad at all under a partly to mostly sunny day. Coming up, I will detail what you can expect for next week, yes, is there any rain in the forecast or snow? Details coming up on your Fox 61 seven-day forecast in a few minutes. Carmen? Sam, thank you. The West Haven Animal Shelter is asking for the public's help after two dogs were found tied to a fence post on Washington Avenue. Take a look at these pictures. The shelter says both dogs had collars on with leashes attached, but did not have tags or microchips. Anyone who has information on these dogs are urged to contact the West Haven Animal Shelter from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. They are open seven days a week. Now to Waterford, where firefighters are investigating a fire that took place in a house on Perry Avenue shortly before 530 this morning. Several agencies responded to the scene and the fire was under control in 45 minutes. One person had to be rushed to the hospital. Their current condition is unknown at this time. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. 
There is that saying, in time of test, family is best. That phrase rang true today when a car caught fire. Shortly before 10 a.m. on Federal Road in Brookfield, this red car was up in flames. No injuries were reported. The two firefighters you see in those pictures were quick to put out the fire, and it is certainly worth mentioning they are a husband and wife duo. Their names Greg and Kayla Volpe. They are considered one of the family teams of the Brookfield Volunteer Fire Company. And great teamwork from this dedicated couple. Although cities, towns and state government observed Veterans Day yesterday, today is when most veterans celebrate this special day. The 11th day of the 11th month, let's start in Watertown where taps played, paying tribute to all who fought for our country. The Water Oak Veterans Council organized today's ceremonies at the Oakville Green and Veterans Memorial Park. An East Hartford, a wreath-laying ceremony was held at the World War I Memorial outside the Raymond Library. The program included the tolling of the bell at the First Congregational Church and remembrance of the veterans listed on the monument as well as ones from other conflicts. I take Veterans Day and all the Memorial Days uh, very, very much to heart because one of the uh, Unfortunate things, the things I remember most about my tour of duty in Vietnam, I had the unique privilege and honor of escorting my cousin's body back to East Hartford, Francis Sullivan. We have to uh, appreciate our military. We have to give them support. And uh, we are cognizant of the fact that they're sacrificing a lot for um, e pluribus unum. In attendance were members of the East Tarfa Rochambeau Elms VFW Post 2083, the Historical Society of East Hartford, and the East Hartford Veterans Commission. West Hartford's Hall High School Choir and Orchestra saluted area veterans in a concert Friday. Here's a portion of their unique rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. job by all. Their concert also featured the theme songs, fight songs and anthems of the Marines, Air Force, Army and Navy.